So I'm here at the Engineering Technology Group. I'm with Dominic Prinsloo uh, from Open Mind Technologies UK. We're going to be talking about a strategy that they are using on this Vulcan TC200 machine. Um, firstly, Dominic, yeah, tell us what the strategy is that we've seen in action today here on this machine. This is called our high performance machining uh, with max turning that we are using on our turning machines. What's the overall goal with it? It's to reduce cycle time. Okay, and what can it do that by and how does it do it? Um, it's done by using your round form inserts and it's by performing um, less uh, cycle time on your tougher materials. Okay, so what you move, you, 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 we're cutting going forward and we're cutting coming backwards as well, aren't we? So that's really where we're getting the majority that's of the correct. gains. That's correct, which is what we call ramping, R ramping in max turning. Right, the principle that I want to cover here is the fact that this machine, TC200 Vulcan machine from ETG, is classed by them as an entry-level machine. It's a different market for them. Um, what we're really saying by doing this strategy is that you can get more out of a, of a lower-cost machine, can't you, to maybe compete yep. against yep. more expensive products. Yep. Yeah, what Ipamoya is capable of doing is taking like your entry-level machine and just take it up to the next notch without having to spend a lot of money to get a new machine in. Just by changing it to a few different strategies, Hypermall will take a machine more advanced. Now, is it capable of doing this on any machine? I mean, let's look at this Vulcan. What, what would you say about running this strategy through here? How does the machine handle it? How does it process it? You know, what, what are the areas that you look for in a machine in order to uh, get the best out of it? How does this well, one perform? We always say the, there's two levels, um, an entry-level machine, which you've got now. So we take our entry-level machine and make it a more advanced machine and make it more productive. And then we also put the same strategy on your more advanced machine and we make that more productive which is bringing in like a B-axis turning, for example. But how does this Vulcan fare? What I really want to find out is how good is this machine? You know, you, th there must be certain loads that you're putting on the machine to do the metal removal that we see mm -hmm. here, and these machines need to be able to cope with that. There must be a way that you can identify how it's performing. Yes, what, what we tend to do we um, in the software, we're trying to uh, decrease the amount of um, load on your machine. So what we, are tr what we then implement is by putting on our max turning environment, we are decreasing your load on your machine, meaning you get more range out of your machine as well, and you, we're making this machine a lot more advanced by using the max turning on it. Okay, but does, is there any indicator that you look at and go, actually, this machine might be better than another lower yes. cost machine? First, first thing we, um, I always look at from my background is that I look at your load. So as soon as you start cutting, I look at the load, and if uh, my personal experience, what I go on, I always go on the X-stroke. I always look at the X-stroke, how much load it gives, and if the load is very high on the X, you know that that turret isn't as solid as you expect it to be. And how was this one? Spot on. Okay. Very impressed, very impressed with it. Now we're cutting steel in here. One of the things I would be thinking is, okay, well, what if my materials are harder? Can I still adopt this, this method of machining on a titanium or something like that? The harder the material, the better the result. No but issues with chip removal? No, ch chip the, normally uh, you, the harder your material, the better chip load you'll get and the better performance you'll get out of your machine. What about the tool itself? Okay, we've got like a button insert on here. Yeah. Is there not, when I felt the heat of one of these coming off, I thought to myself, Oh, that's pretty warm. Is that not going to wear my tool? What, what, what's the, yeah, the impact on in that area? Yeah, what, the, the gain you have by having this round insert or the button insert as we all know it is the fact that you do not have a corner like on your C-style insert. So it doesn't know where to, the insert doesn't know where to put the heat. Where's the corner to you run it to? So it puts the heat all over the whole insert. And what's happening now by doing that, and you're also putting in your ramping, you're also using the full circumference of that insert. So you're not only using a specific area, but you're actually gaining by using the full radius of that tool. Okay. So your tool life increases. Okay, and what about the control that you, well, let's say I had an older machine. Mm. You, you say you can put this strategy across the board. Mm. Let's say I have a machine 10, 12, 15 years old. Mm. Can I still use this yes, strategy I'll, on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, um, you won't be limited. You won't be limited by the machine. What will be the problem that could limit you is memory, machine memory. If you've got enough memory on your machine, you should not have a problem. Okay, I probably should have started this interview by asking this, but this will be my last question. Mm. That doesn't look like a real life application to me, um, but it's a good demonstration. I get why you do it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe introduce us to what a real life uh, part would be where people will get these savings that you talk about. Where does it fit? I take myself 
from my background and the industry I come from, which is the motorsport industry. So in my knowledge that where I like to implement it is stage machining. Before stage machining, because that is where the long runners come, like your 40-minute, 30-minute uh, runners, bring, bring that into like your bevels, camshafts, stuff like that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Those complicated areas. Yeah, so it's all about uh, metal, metal removal. Metal removal. Yep. And it doesn't matter whether it's roughing or finishing? Nope, doesn't matter. The finishing cuts are slightly yep. different. Um, maybe you should talk to Open Mind about their Hypermill product, whether you're looking at uh, a new TC200 machine like this or you've got a machine in your machine shop that you want to get more out of. It's definitely an option for you. It's been really fascinating today, Dominic. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having us, Paul. Thank you.